It's little wonder he's smiling, strolling into what's been billed as the Brexit election as the frontman of the Brexit party. And at their campaign launch today in central London, from his very first line, <laughs> Nigel Farage poured scorn on the state of Brexit going into this election. It is November the 1st, and yes, we are still members of the European Union. That attack line inevitable, maybe, when the Prime Minister has spent months saying this. Afternoon, Mr Johnson. Will we definitely have left by November? By November, you bet. Mr Farage spent most of today's launch appealing to the Prime Minister instead of voters. First, a message. I'm going to say this to Boris Johnson. Drop the deal. Drop the deal because it's not Brexit. Then, an offer. I believe the only way to solve this is to build a leave alliance across this country. And that doesn't mean just Conservatives and the Brexit party. There are Labour figures out there that I've spoken to who would more than happily stand in this election if we could put this coalition together. But if it was done, Boris Johnson would win a very big majority. And lastly, the threat. We will contest every single seat in England, Scotland and Wales. The gauntlet thrown down, unite or fight it out. But it's an offer which expires in two weeks, says Mr Farage. This is an offer which Boris Johnson is never going to be able to accept. Isn't this just a waste of two weeks? Well, it's not a waste of my two weeks. I would have thought that there comes a point within the next couple of weeks when they will say to themselves, even though we don't want to do this, even though the Conservative Party historically never does these things, actually, we've got no choice. Whether they do it out of high principle, whether they do it because they just want to win the election, I don't really care. I don't mind how it happens, I just care that it does. How likely is that pact? He didn't have to wait long for a response. If people vote for the Conservative Party, they will get Brexit with a good deal that works for the EU and for the UK. And for all of those people who are just sick and tired of the whole subject, I would say to them, vote Conservative. You will get Brexit done and we can move on to the things that really matter to people. The real threat is to Labour, say the Brexit party. Labour disagree. Well, first of all, look, uh, democracy is about different points of view. If Mr Farage wants to put candidates up, Good luck to him. He's not going to get very far, I don't think. I don't think he's going to get a deal with the Tories. I think that they will run separate campaigns. The election campaign has started in earnest now. SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon hitting the streets in Edinburgh today. Her message that this election could well lead to a second independence referendum. A vote for the SNP in this election is a vote to escape Brexit and put Scotland's future into Scotland's hands so that we can choose that better alternative as an independent country. But it was the Lib Dems that were given the clearest boost today as they welcomed former Tory MP Antoinette Sambach to the party, although the boost may be short-lived. 2016, your constituency voted to leave. 2017, they voted for a Conservative. The Lib Dems came third. You haven't really got a hope in hell of winning this election, have you? Well, I do realise it's a long shot. You know, the Liberal Democrats did come third, so no, no one says it's a massive career move for me, but it's because I, I believe in it so passionately. In many seats, though, it's not the Lib Dems, but the Brexit party causing the headaches. What the numbers look like is that for every one voter that Nigel Farage's Brexit party is taking from the Labour Party, they're taking two votes from the Conservative Party. So that means in those Labour marginal seats, they are going to be hurting the Conservatives, on current polling at least, much more than they're hurting Labour. And votes being split is not the concern of Mr Farage. You were splitting the vote, don't you? The Tories could well split our votes. Yeah. So are you risking Brexit? They're not offering it. But effectively, you're risking it, aren't you? The new EU treaty is not Brexit. That's the point. His message simply, Boris Johnson's deal is not Brexit. Expect to hear that many times over in the next six weeks. And Paul joins me now. Paul, there's an election underway, which means debates about the debates. What's going on?
Yeah, it's become the will they, won't they question ever since 2010. Will the leaders do a debate? What will the format be? We actually know quite early on this, this time round. It'll be Tuesday, the 19th of November on ITV. But it'll be a head-to-head -head only between Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. Cue outrage from other opposition leaders. Joe Swinson tweeting out earlier on, Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn are running scared of debating the woman leader of the strongest party of Remain. ITV say there will be a separate programme run after the debate in which the other leaders will be able to comment on what they've seen. And I see you've set off the bells behind you. What about this pressure on Dominic Cummings tonight? Yeah, it's an announcement at the end of the first week, not an ideal announcement. So there's a committee of MPs investigating so-called fake news, um, and they want to talk to Mr Cummings about his time as the, the man in charge of vote leave during the referendum. They tried to get him to appear in March. He didn't appear. He was found in contempt of Parliament. They tried again last month, and Downing Street said he's a civil servant, he can't take part. Now, Constitutional Minister Kevin Foster has clarified saying he could appear in a private capacity, but they also add he would remain, it would remain a matter for him to consider. So not clear that he will have to appear, but pressure is mounting and timing is bad. Thanks, Paul. Chris? Well, Nigel Farage might be setting his sights on Labour leave voters, but can he win them over in a contest where many traditional loyalties will be sharply divided. Labour stronghold Bishop Auckland voted 61% to leave the EU, and that makes it a constituency which the Tories now think they can win, as our political correspondent Liz Bates reports. Um, so, yeah, it's the first time we'll have an office in the patch since, uh, I think, 2005-ish. Yep. Yeah. Bishop Auckland in County Durham has never had a Conservative MP, but with a Labour majority of just 500, the Tories are moving in on this seat. Brexit has paved the way for political upheaval here, and the Tory candidate is confident about taking on Labour. So this is the office without anything in it yet? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's there. There will be maps all over the walls, uh, leaflets probably littering everywhere on the floor. She is concerned, though, that Leave voters could split between the Conservatives and the Brexit party. What, what I don't understand is if you are a, a committed Brexit party and your ultimate goal is to have Brexit delivered, it does seem strange to stand candidates and split that Brexiteer vote to risk letting more sort of Remain MPs um, into Parliament or, you know, maintaining the current level of Remain MPs. If, if you're committed to the cause, surely you would think, let's not split the vote and let's give a, a real Brexiteer a chance. But it's not my decision and I'm, I'm fighting for every vote, whatever happens. Yeah. As campaigning begins, the message is simple. Get Brexit done. But do voters want to hear it? I don't think you would ever go Tory, if I'm honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove you wrong in December. Hi, Leigh. Sorry to trouble you. Can I... Don't, don't trouble me. No, no worries at all. Thank you very much. Politics stuff? No, no worries. Let me give you one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Some aren't convinced. I, I find it just hard to believe Boris Johnson. Okay. He's, got, he's gone back on so many promises. What he did to the DUP, what he's, you know... We're definitely going to leave on the 31st. No matter what, I'm going to be dead in a ditch if we don't type of thing. Mm. Are we out? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's been obviously made quite difficult by shenanigans in I Parliament. I can understand sure that, but he shouldn't be making promises like that if yeah. he doesn't think he's going to be 100% sure to, to, to be able to hold them up. But others seem to be shifting away from Labour. And what's, what's changed your mind? Just the mucking about that they've all done and what have you. Uh, just think Boris is there and standing his ground with all of them and... Uh, I think he's the only man that's going to see this through. So what are your thoughts at the moment on politics and everything that's going on? It's a mess, mm -hmm. but I will be voted Conservative. Thank you, I appreciate that. I've voted Labour for a long time, but mm -hmm. at the moment I can't, I can't vote Labour. I just don't trust what they want to do. Is, is that and, I want to go, and I've voted out of Brexit as well. Yeah, and I want so to go out of Brexit. Some fledgling Tory support here, but could the Brexit party get in her way? I think we showed in those few weeks of the European elections uh, what our potential appeal to Labour Leave voters was, uh, because our highest scoring region was the North East. Ahead of a much anticipated intervention from Nigel Farage this morning, Bishop Auckland's Brexit Party candidate, one of hundreds across the country, was waiting nervously to hear from his party leader. Here we go. <laughs> After confirmation that the party will be taking on Tories in key marginals like this one, he was adamant that the strategy won't backfire. How would it feel if you got to the point where that Leave vote split between you and the Tories here and it 
and it actually enabled a Labour MP to stay on here. There is no splitting of the Leave vote because Boris's deal isn't Leave. So in reality, the Brexit Party is the only party that's standing for Leave. Mm. And so I would feel fine representing all of those people who have emailed me saying, we need this clean break Brexit to get out of the European Union. The Labour MP Helen Goodman saw her majority fall to just 500 in 2017, with the Conservatives a close second. The Liberal Democrat vote collapsed here two years ago, but their policy to revoke Article 50 and cancel Brexit could win over some Remainers. She's under pressure, but if her political opponents take on each other instead of her, she could hold on. If the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party end up sort of fighting and taking each other out, is that a good thing for the Labour Party? Well, I would quite like to lower the temperature in British politics. I mean, if they want to have a fight, that's up to them. <laughs> I don't need to be involved in their, in their struggles. Um, but I think what we really want to get people to focus on is what kind of country they want for the future, what do they want for their children, and be slightly, get slightly beyond the next six months to the next five years. But it's the next five weeks that will decide the political future of Bishop Auckland. And once again, it could be Brexit that makes the difference. Liz Bates reporting. Well, joining me now from Westminster is the Liberal Democrat peer, Brian Paddock, and with me here in the studio, Ben Habib, who's a Brexit Party MEP and a parliamentary candidate in this current election. Welcome to you both. Let me start with Thanks, you, Ben man. Habib. This is kamikaze politics, isn't it? It's not kamikaze. I mean, what Nigel said this morning, it's interesting, I heard you describe it as a non-aggression pact. Actually, what Nigel offered... I think he described it as a non-aggression well, pact. Offer, he offered a leave alliance. And what Nigel... With a threat and an ultimatum. Well, what... And the ultimatum was, we'll give you six months in which to, f to negotiate a free trade agreement, a genuine free trade agreement, not a withdrawal treaty, not a political declaration signed up in perpetuity, um, but a genuine free trade agreement. But that's agreement. what he's trying to do once we've withdrawn from the EU. Yeah, well, once we, we Brexit, that's what, that's what the next year is all about. Well, but what you're doing is you're trying to split the... the no, it's quite the, no, it's quite the opposite. Well, first of all, the withdrawal agreement and its associated political declaration is not Brexit. Um, I can go through a, ho but, a whole host of reasons why it isn't. But, you know, we're not splitting the Leave vote. We're giving the Tories an opportunity to press the reset button <clears throat> to actually get rid of this wretched mm. treaty. This treaty is going to bind us into three years of protracted negotiations. You but do appreciate that. Even, Pat. you know, people yeah. like Marc François, the ERG, you know, hardcore Brexiteers yeah. in the Tory party have signed up to this deal. All I can and tell you... And you know that it's the one thing that he will not compromise on. The only thing I can tell you is I have been through that agreement with a fine tooth comb and it is 95% what Theresa May signed up for, with the exception of the significant change in the withdrawal agreement where Ireland, where Northern Ireland went from being in the backstop to being in the front stop with a, with a border down be, the Irish Sea. Be that as it may, I mean, the, the supreme irony of this could be that you end up actually... You know, thwarting Brexit. No, I don't think so. You're the party that tried to bring it about in the first no, place. Because if we thought the Tories, which is what I think you're saying, is we're not thwarting Brexit. But if you, if the Tories don't get elected in this election yeah. and the Labour Party gets in, there'll be, a, with a clear majority, there'll be a referendum and it could overturn Brexit and it's goodbye Brexit. It needn't happen. It needn't happen. And it's all up to the Prime Minister. What he needs to do is pause, take a deep breath, understand... He's already said no. Yeah, but he may change his mind. He's known for changing like his it. mind. In July, he said there'd be no border down the IRC. In July, he said the withdrawal agreement was dead, dead, dead. And here it is back up and kicking it. I just want to say something, Matt. You know, the Prime Minister rightly described the Ben Act as the Surrender Act. And he, he described it as a surrender act because he knew once that act was passed, he couldn't get a good mm. deal. Yeah. He also knew we weren't leaving on the 31st of October. But he went on okay. saying after that act that we will leave on the 31st of October and that his deal was a good deal. And we all know it couldn't possibly be a good deal. Okay. All right. Just stay there. Yeah. We'll get back to you in a minute. Let's go to Brian Paddock. Uh, Brian, I mean, I don't know what you think of the idea of having a, a non-aggression pact between the Brexit Party and the Tory Party, but isn't that exactly what you need with the Labour Party? some kind of Remain alliance, because otherwise you're split 
and you won't uh, you won't get into power. Yeah, but Labour is not a Remain party. Jeremy Corbyn has made it quite clear what he wants to do is he wants to get into power and then to negotiate a deal with the European Union that will convince uh, the public that we should leave. Uh, Labour is as much a Leave party as the Conservative Party and the Brexit party. That's nonsense. Meanwhile, isn't it? you know that's having... nonsense. That's just I mean, not true. Of course it's true. Jeremy Corbyn was asked yesterday if there was going to be another referendum, how we would vote, how the Labour Party were going to, to go but, when, that, when, that, uh, when that came along. But the point and he refused is that to answer the question. But they've offered a referendum on whatever deal they've managed to concoct with the EU and remain, which is something that used to be your position. Surely, to all those millions of people out there who are desperate to see Brexit overturned, you owe it to them that you form an alliance with the Labour Party that allows that referendum to come about. Uh, does it, Matt, does this make sense to you? You go to the European Union, you try and negotiate the best possible deal you can to leave the European Union, and then you go back and say to the public, actually, we, we've negotiated this deal, but we don't want you to vote for it. But, it at, least remain, but at least Remain is on the, op is on the ballot. Right? And what you're doing is splitting the Remain alliance. Yeah. And what we've got is we've got a debate coming up on television where we've got two leaders of two Leave parties and the voice of Remain will not be heard. Even if uh, it, Jeremy Corbyn takes a neutral stance in that mm. debate, there will be nobody opposing the Leave position of Boris Johnson. That is unrepresentative and it's unacceptable. OK, well, Remain is being heard tonight, thanks to you. Let me ask you something else. Ever since your party conference, ever since you decided that you wanted to revoke Article 50, your opinion poll ratings have been going down. Do you now regret that? Not at all. We have to be honest with the public. We are the party of Remain. We want to remain in the European Union. The public have a chance now. If they vote for a majority Liberal Democrat uh, government, then they know that we will revoke uh, Article 50 and we will put an end to all this Brexit nonsense, stone dead within a few weeks of the new parliament coming into, in, into existence. Right. That's okay. the only way to stop Brexit immediately. Ben Habib, one more to you. Um, if the Tories don't get a majority and we get another hung parliament, right? I mean, it's all over then, isn't it? Well, it depends people? on the complexion of the hung parliament. So you hope to be the kingmakers in the Well, hung we parliament. may be the kingmakers. That's what you're <laughs> going for. <laughs> well, what we, the only thing we're interested in, Matt, is a clean Brexit, a proper Brexit. It sounds like you're interested in something else. No, you want to, you want to, absolutely, you honestly. want to be a power broker in the next. Well, we want to make possibly. sure that the Tories actually deliver Brexit. You know, the Prime Minister has pivoted so many times and eventually produced this deal, which actually binds yeah. us into the European Union in perpetuity. Okay. Brian Paddock, is that all you want to be power brokers in the next uh, in a hung Parliament, possibly? Can absolutely, make it five absolutely. Seconds? Absolutely not. The, 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 polling, the, the polling experts say this is a very volatile situation and Joe Swinson could just as easily be the next Prime Minister as Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn. OK, Brian Paddock, Ben Habib, thanks very much. Thank you. Chris. Well, Downing Street has stepped in to defend Boris Johnson's Brexit deal, unsurprisingly, after Donald Trump criticised it on a radio phone-in show, claiming it would prevent the United States from doing a trade deal with the UK. President Trump also dismissed Labour warnings that the NHS would be up for sale after Brexit, allowing US firms to profit from it, an idea he described as ridiculous. So what's the reality? Our Washington correspondent Siobhan Kennedy reports. Come what may, American farmers with their lobbying millions will play a huge role in any trade deal with the UK. <coughs> it's no secret they want their hormone-injected beef, chlorinated chicken and high-priced prescription drugs on British shelves for any post-Brexit deal to get the go-ahead. Which is why President Trump had this to say about Boris Johnson's Brexit deal when he dialed into Nigel Farage's radio show. This deal, under certain aspects of the deal, uh, you can't do it. You can't no. do it. You, you can't trade. Well, I mean, we can't make a trade deal with the UK and we can be... Because I, I, I think you, we can do many times the numbers that we're doing right now and certainly much bigger numbers that you're doing under the European Union. Well, so I'm like you. I'm I know like Boris you. wants to be very careful with that. Everything seems so rosy when the PM and President Trump met for talks at the UN in September. We're going to be discussing trade 
uh, we can uh, quadruple our trade with UK. And, and today, number 10 insisted that Boris Johnson's deal leaves the UK free to strike its own trade deals, even with the US. So what did President Trump mean? On one level, this is classic Trump posturing. Create tension first, as he's done with China and numerous other trade disputes, then negotiate later. But equally, when it comes to a trade deal with the UK, there's no denying the US will have the upper hand. So if Boris Johnson wants a deal, he'll have to be prepared to put everything on the table, including chlorinated chicken. And even though the UK has said the NHS is not up for sale, not up for grabs, we won't have your chlorinated chicken, do you think that the US simply isn't listening to that and thinks that we'll just, we'll just bulldoze in any trade negotiation? No, I think the US is listening very carefully, and that's what prompted the president to make these statements. Um, I think what Trump was reminding the UK of is that the US has the upper hand in these negotiations. As it does in all of them? As it does in most trade negotiations. Even yes. as you say in when two sides are willing? When two sides are even with two willing uh, discussion partners, big trade agreements take years to negotiate. So the, the UK needs to buckle up and there's more of this ahead, more of the disruption and quite a few more concessions I'm afraid if a trade deal is going to be struck. He says potential deals around the NHS are already being discussed behind closed doors. All part of what Jeremy Corbyn says will be a toxic trade deal with President Trump, where lower food standards and higher drug prices will be the price the UK has to pay.